We're getting ready for a dive tomorrow, and I'm heading down to Mike's house tonight. But first I want to go through some of the gear. Some people are asking about what we're using. So let's go through step by step what I'm bringing down. Okay, these are the steel 120 tanks. It means 120 cubic feet of air. There's about 3,200 pounds in them right now, pressure. You get about three hours out of one of these at the depth we're diving. Uh, because it's a high pressure tank, you want to use what's called a DIN setup, which is the way it connects to the tank. Uh, there's two different kinds of yoke and a dim. Uh, the yoke has an O-ring, which blows out, unfortunately, pretty easy. This has an O-ring, but it's a much more sturdy setup. After connecting the regulator, we want to do a couple things. First, you turn on the air. You check your pressure. Okay, we're looking like about 3,200 pounds, so we're good. You want to check your regulator. All good. Instead of having an octopus hanging off the regulator, I actually use the breather hose here. This breather hose, I don't know if you can see it, acts as an, a secondary breather, as an octopus. In case your other one fails, you have this to, to use. In the BC, which is the buoyancy compensator, the black thing is hooked up to the tank. It's called a BC or a buoyancy compensator. Um, there's eight pounds of lead that I keep in the back. So let's get this inside. Okay, got everything inside. Now the tank weighs 53 pounds. We have eight pounds of lead in the BC, and then we have 16 pounds in each of these. There's another 32 pounds of lead. So I'm going down there with 40 pounds. And you need that weight when you're digging. If you're just regular scuba diving, you don't need it. But if you're digging, you get pushed around when you start to dig. So you need that extra weight to help you stay on the bottom. This clips on the BC. And this is my goodie bag. Inside it, what do I keep here? I got a small bag. This is for real fine stuff. If you, if you get a chain or something like a tiny earring, look at the sand that's still coming out of this thing. Hmm. But yeah, you just keep this in here because it's uh, obviously the, the holes on this are too big. So this is for the real fine stuff. Then if it uh, gets murky, I have the probe. This is the uh, waterproof probe I use, just in case. And of course, the knife. Anything comes up, it's always good to keep a knife with you. So I keep these and then I clip them right on the D-ring on the BC. Now what we're going to be diving with in terms of a tire, you want to keep everything in one mesh bag. I'm talking to George and Tim. Guys, you put the boots here in with the fins. Next we got what I call the hoodie or chicken vest, which is just a simple vest that goes underneath your suit. This is only uh, three mil and five mil, kind of a mix. This goes underneath and then the suit itself is a seven mil suit keeps you really warm when you're down there for about three hours which is what you can easily get out of a tank you want to definitely be warm because the chill will set in after a couple hours if you're not dressed right we also have gloves neoprene gloves and of course the mask now with the gloves the left one gets torn up because that's what you dig with even with the kevlar they get torn up so i put a little aqua seal on the fingertips and this seems to last the whole season. So you can dig in the rocks and sand with this and it won't tear it up. Without the Aqua Seal, these gloves are gone in one or two dives. The primary machine I'm using tomorrow is the Excalibur. I have this set up on an Anderson shaft. I'm using the 12 uh, inch Nell coil. And I have the uh, Amphibian headphones are now made for the CTX 3030. So I just uh, cut these and, and wired them up. And these are real loud underwater, so they work well for me. So we have the amphibians, we have the Anderson shaft, and we have the Nell coil on this. Uh, then my backup, which I'm going to keep, and you need to have a backup because unfortunately when you're dealing with water, they will fail. Um, I just have the, on an Anderson setup, it's a standard 10-inch loop X-Cal. Now that everything's loaded, we're on our way down to the boat. Probably get there in a couple hours and uh, get everything loaded tonight because we're heading out at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning.
search for a calm morning. Detached. Usually it's like glass in here, Mike. I know. See how it is over there. I hate to go diving if you're not there though. I don't like to have to snap in the bank at that time. I get remember. nervous about these swells. Yeah, I hear you. going to go in the water, then it's going to be a very quick dive. I'm not leaving the boat in this. That's up. There's that swell we're looking for. Wow. I don't know if you can appreciate it looking out this window and not seeing anything on the beach. <laughs> I, I was afraid it was going to be rough.
Huh. It got worse down there. You know, uh, I don't know if you felt it, but it was pretty steady. And then it was like two times for five minutes. It was horrible up here. And then it went back to this. This isn't so bad. Got it, got it. And there was so many signals, Mike. We gotta get back on a nice day because signals were everywhere there. It was shaved where I saw the old clamshells. I'm like, oh, that's a good sign. And just coin after coin after coin. And you knew what they were, they were high signals. And this one sounded just like one of the rotted pennies because it's broad, you know? It's not a thin ring, it's a broad ring. So it didn't give a low, low tone or a nickel tone like you figure. Makes me wonder, I don't think it's just that one jetty point that shaved away. I bet you if we go out there, there might be a cut along the beach with those jetties. So we're definitely on a nice day, gotta check this out again. I mean, wait till you see the number of targets, Mike. You're gonna be shocked. A lot of targets came out. For an hour and a half of hunting, 
a lot of targets. Soak your machine in fresh water, especially after you're in the ocean. Um, real important to take it apart, otherwise it'll fuse together. So I'm just going to push the button in here, wiggle it around a bit. Okay, there we go. And then you let it fill up and you pour it out. And you can see, I don't know if you saw that or not, but just a whole black blob of sand came out of the shaft. If you don't do this, it'll fuse up. I've had that happen years ago with an Excalibur. Or you won't be able to remove the shaft. So we'll get that clean on this side, same thing. We got the BC and the regulator. We'll shake out as much as we can. Now a whole mesh bag with everything. Push it down in the fresh water and let it sit for a while. 